today is going to be found in Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. It's a great verse. It's going to be on the screen. It says this, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. Reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household would be my heir. And I just want to pause. What's taking place in this moment is God is telling Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to be your reward. And Abraham's like, hold up, pause. Like, why are you going to give me more? Why are you going to bless me more when, when I die, I have no, no children to pass it down to? He said, why do you want to bless me? Do you want me to give my inheritance to my servant, Eleazar? And this is what's taking place in that verse. And then verse 4 says, Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man, Eleazar, will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood. Come on, somebody. Will be your heir. Verse 5. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. So shall your offspring be. This morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, and then we're going to worship. I want to talk to you from the subject, exercising my expectation. Exercising my expectation. Let's pray. Father, we love you. God, we thank you for what you're already doing in this place. God, I thank you for, uh, for those that, that um, are here this morning, those that are viewing us online. God, you, you know that it's desperation that gets people out of bed. It's desperation that gets people out of bed and gets people willing to get dressed to come out in the rain because they want to touch from you. And so, God, as, as you healed the woman with the issue of blood because of her desperation to press through, God, I pray for those that, that were able to press through this morning to be here. God, that you would bless them and online, God, but I pray for a special blessing to those that are in the house this morning. God, as we exercise an expectation for what you want to do, Lord, I pray that you would... Uh, expand our vision. Lord, we thank you. We love you. God, because we, we want to leave here changed. We want to leave here better, not for our own benefit, but so that we can change the world around us. And so we thank you for that, my God. We love you. In Jesus' name, come on, everyone, say it. Amen. 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 So my wife and I, we've been married 15 years. And uh, yes, yes. Yeah, Thank you. Almost 15 years. Thank you, babe. Uh, we've, we've almost been married 15 years, and i got to tell you, the, there's some things that we do now that we, don't, we never did when uh, we were dating. Did I say that right? I think I said that right. Just roll with me. Just roll with me. And so, for, for instance, uh, when we were dating and when we would go out to eat, uh, this was a time when my wife, she still enjoyed going out to the movies for a date night. So when we were not married yet and we were just dating, um, I would always just, I would try to dress up. I would try to just put on my sexy slim, uh, slim fit jeans with my belt. You, you know what I'm saying? And, and I was just trying to, trying to look as, as amazing as I possibly can. And uh, it never failed. My wife and I, we would go to eat, specifically when we would go to eat at a buffet, all-you-can-eat place, um, let, let me pause because here, here's my, my expectation when I go to a buffet. I want to walk in the place, and I want the people that work there to be like, oh, we're about to lose money. Because <laughs> I want to put it down. And so, so we would go to, like, restaurants into all you can eat, and I'm wearing my sexy jeans and, and my belt because my belt, like, if I wear a belt, that means I'm dressing up. And, and so... So we're sitting there, man, and I'm just like, I'm eating. And, uh, and then we would go to the movies afterwards, and we would sit in the movies. And I remember there were numerous amounts of times I'm so full because the, the food is expanding, right, in my stomach. Uh, like there were moments when I was in the movie theater, and I'm like, 
would she think I'm weird if I just started unbuckling my pants, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> would she judge me? I don't want her to get the wrong idea. And so I'm sitting, and like, I'm like, I'm so uncomfortable. Because I was not expecting to expand. And so fast forward to now. Listen, when my wife and I go on date night now, your boy wears sweatpants. <laughs> when we're going to Paradise Sushi, I'm not wearing my sexy little tight jeans. And I don't care if she liked them. I'm putting sweats on. Why? Because sweats are meant to expand. Sweats are meant to go with the flow, everybody. And so, and so, uh, so now when we go out, I, I got my sweatpants on. And I'm ready, I'm ready to walk in the sushi joint and then just get night sweats because they're scared of me. <laughs> Why? Because now I have an expectation to expand. I'll say that again. Now, I have an expectation to expand. Now, I have an expect. I just want, I need you to, to get that in. I have an expectation to expand. And here's the craziest part. My expectation to expand, it begins before I even put a piece of sushi in my mouth. Before I even place a piece of sushi in my mouth, I'm already expecting to expand. While I'm still waiting for my food, and I'm hungry, and I haven't tasted anything yet, I still have an expectation to expand. Friends, this morning, I, I, we're, we're talking about expectation, of having an expectation. Now, having an expectation in life is crucial, but I want to submit to you, having an expectation when it comes to your walk with Jesus is crucial. Because my expectation sets the table for what happens next. My expectation sets the table for what God can and will do next. Now, here, here's something that you may or may not have known, but we serve, the God in the Bible is a God that is all about expansion. The God that we read about in the Bible is all about enlarging. There's three, three verses that I just want to just quickly just show to you. The first one is in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. We're introduced to a guy named Jabez. And I think we have the verse. He, he says this. He says, cries out to God, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge, expand my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And so Jabez is like, God, would you just enlarge? Would you expand my territory? And what does the verse say? It says, he took it down. What does it say? <laughs> and God granted his request. God, would you enlarge? Would you expand my territory? He could have been like, no, that's not what I do. But it said that God granted his request. I got another verse, Psalms 18. This is uh, the, uh, David. He, he writes this in Psalms 18. You enlarged, you expanded my path so that my feet did not slip. Some other translations in, in the commentary, it says that, that uh, you liken it to like a narrow pathway. And there's like objects all around the pathway. So you can't really like walk around it. Like if you go forward, you're going to step on something. The, a, a commentary says that this verse is saying, or what David is saying, is that God, I thank you that you are enlarging the pathway. So that I don't have to step on anything. I can go around it. So my feet don't slip. He's like, God, thank you for enlarging my path. 
for expanding my territory. I got one more for you. First Corinthians, I believe, chapter 9. Says this, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. And so the apostle Paul, he's saying, so the same God that supplies the seed, the same God that supplies the harvest of, of that comes from the seed, he, he doesn't just want to enlarge your physical territory, but he also wants to expand your, uh, what Jesus is doing inside. The harvest of the righteousness. And so, so what we see in these three verses is that God is all about expanding. He's all about enlarging your territory. The question is, am I in the posture of expecting? Am I in the posture of, of, of expecting God to do something? Does your expectation align with God's desires to expand? Now, in our opening text, we're introduced to what we read in Genesis 15. We're introduced to this man named Abram. And, uh, and, and Abram, he, he little later become Abraham. And what's very, uh, inter- or what I love, excuse me, about Genesis chapter 15 is that we're privy to this convert we're, we're privy to this conversation that is really the uh, the origin story of Israel. And, and and so what's taken place here is is God in, in in Genesis 15 and verse 5. God is he calls Abram out, and we're gonna talk about what he's calling him out of. And he brings Abram outside. And he, he, he tells Abram, he's like, Abram, I want you to look at the sky. Okay? God says to Abram, do you see the stars in the sky? Abram's like, yeah, yes, I see it. God said, your, your, um, your offspring will mimic the stars in the sky. And what I want you to understand is that in this moment, what God is doing is he's enlarging, expanding the vision of Abraham. He's expanding the vision of Abraham. But there's there's a problem. Because... If I'm not careful, I will always allow my reality to dictate my expectation. And so God calls Abram outside. He says, look at the stars in the sky. As many stars in the sky that there are, so will your offspring be. The only problem is that Abram's reality, we read in verse 2 and 3 of of Genesis 15. Abram's reality is that him and his wife can't have kids. Think about that. Abram's reality is he can't have kids. And yet God is over here telling him, hey, as many stars are as, as many stars as there are in the sky, so will your offspring be. But God, that's not my reality. My reality is there's something broken because we can't have kids. And in this moment, Abram has to decide what to do. In this moment, Abram's having to decide if his reality is going, if he's going to move based off of reality or based off of expectation. Friends, this morning, whatever season of life you are in, you are going to have to decide if your movement is going to be based off of your reality or the expectation that God is going to, is going to um, enlarge my vision for what he wants to do. 
And that is the hardest thing to do because as you know, my barrier from, from expecting or receiving what God wants to do, my barrier is always my reality. My barrier, the, the thing that I always have to push past is what my reality currently is. And so this morning, what, what, what I want to try to stir in your soul and in your spirit is to grow the expectation despite your reality. Like God wants to enlarge, God wants to expand your vision for your marriage. Even if your marriage currently is on the rocks. God wants to expand your vision for your family. Even if right now your family is in chaos. God wants to expand your vision for hope. Even if in this moment right now it seems hopeless. He wants to expand your vision despite what your reality is saying. And so what I want us to do in the next moments together briefly is I want to give you three ways to exercise your expectation. Three ways to exercise your expectation. And we're going to pull it out of a verse in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. I love this verse. And it says this, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is work with, at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so what I want to do is I want to give you three, three exercises to, 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 that you can exercise to, to, to begin to uh, expand your expectation. So you can begin to see and expect that God wants to enlarge, expand your territory, even if your reality right now looks completely different. And so here it is. The first one, number one. It says, Paul writes, he says, Now to him who is able. To him who is able. Exercise one. I got to continuously remind myself of who God is. To him who is able. I love that title that Paul gives God. He says, to him who is able. Mm -hmm. To him who is able. Paul could have used any title. But could I be honest? If he used any other title besides God is able, I would be like, ah. think about it. If he was like, to him who is to him who, who may do immeasurably more. To him who could do immeasur immeasurably more. To him who might do immeasurably more. Like I'm reading this verse completely different. If in fact the Apostle Paul doesn't first say to him who is able. To him who is able. That is a bold statement, everybody. Yeah. To him who is able. Yeah. Think about that. To him who is able. That, that, I think the, the struggle that a lot of us have, and maybe if it's not you, the struggle that I have with putting that title on God and saying that God is a God who is able, my struggle with this, and it's probably not yours. You got it probably all figured out. But... But my struggle with that is, is I don't want to be disappointed. And so if I read it as to God who might, it gives him a little leeway. If I say to the God who, who should, who would, all of a sudden I'm like, well, if it doesn't happen, okay, then it's good. But can I propose to you that the, that the fact that God is able is a mindset, not a reality. That when I choose to say that God is able, it is a mindset, more so a mindset than it is a reality. When it's a mindset, it doesn't matter the outcome because it's already right here. 
But when I say uh, that God is able, and when, it's, when, I, when I base it off of a reality, if he doesn't show up in the way that I want him to, if he doesn't do what I was hoping that he would do, all of a sudden, I start seeing God differently. And then it affects how I see him going forward. All, all of a sudden, I'm basing my sight off of now, my reality, rather than saying, God, you are able. It's a mindset. God, even if you don't do it, God, you are able. See, I learned this from, from my pastor uh, back in, when, when I was in Santa Rosa. I was a youth kids pastor, uh, and I was there for six, seven years. Um, he got cancer, and I don't understand why, why that happened, and he ended up passing away. But what's amazing to me is we had this relationship, and he would always say, like, even as his health decreased, he was always saying, like, God's able. I'm like, but it, your reality doesn't look like it. God is able. Even to the last time that I saw him, his mindset was God is able. Come on, church. I got to begin to embrace this mindset that God is able. That God is able. I don't care about my reality. My reality doesn't change your title. That you are able. Two people are getting it out here. I appreciate it. I feel like I'm preaching my guts out. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Exercise one, I got to remind myself of who God is. Exercise number two, I got to align myself to more. I got to align myself to more. So, so Paul, he, he says that to him who is able, he gave the title. That's who God is. He's able. He's not maybe. He's not might. He's able. But once I understand who he is, I got to understand what he can do. And in this text that the Apostle Paul writes, he says that God is able to do more. I love that. I love the fact that God's able to do more. But what I love even more than him being able to do more is I love the fact that God wants to, can do more than what I can ask, think, or imagine. So that means no matter what I think my more looks like, God is far exceeding that. He's, he's it's far exceeding what I currently think of more, what I currently think more is. He said, he said that, that God, um, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than I can ask, think, or imagine. We have access to a God that doesn't want to do what you think that you should do, but he wants to do more. See, you think you, think you have what he wants in your marriage, but he wants to do even more than that. You think you have a standard of what he wants to do in your relationships, but he wants to do more than that. You think you have a standard of, of where he wants to take you in your occupation, in your career, but he has even more than that. And so I have to decide, am I going to align myself with my more or his more? To him who is able, there's a title, to do exceedingly abundantly more than I can ask, think, or imagine. We're talking about exercising our expectation. Number one. I got to remind myself of who God is. I got to, number two, align myself to the right more. And then he goes on to say this, according to his power that is at work within us. According to his power that is of his work that is within us. Number three, I got to embrace whose I am. I got to embrace whose I am. 
So my son, my oldest, this was when he was like four. He would, uh, we would, I love wrestling with my boys and my girl too. Um, and, uh, and we would always wrestle and the band can come up now. That'll help me end it. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> he would, uh, so, so we would wrestle, okay? We would wrestle, and uh, he's, again, he's four years old. He was four years, four years old at this time, and uh, he loved Iron Man. And so we'd have, like, this Iron Man mask on, and he had, like, this little hand thing that he would put on his hand that would shoot lasers. And uh, that pretend lasers. Pretend, thank you, baby. <laughs> like, what kind of parent are you? And uh, so, 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 so we would, we would wrestle. We're wrestling, and uh, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my son is like, pew, pew, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> We're wrestling, pew, pew, and and so what I would what I did is uh, I would just I would just fall down, you know, just I would play along with it. And uh, and so so one day in particular, we were uh, we were wrestling, and he was shooting, he was he was shooting his his laser, and I fell down, and uh, and uh, I would uh, I, I I got up, and I asked him. I said, "Son, I said why uh, I said why are you uh, why 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 do you think?" that your pretend lasers can hurt me. I said, I said, why, why do you think that your little pew pew is the best method of fighting me? And what he said changed my perspective on, on, on who God is. He said, I said, son, why, why do you, why do you, why do you do that? He said, because, Daddy, you said I was Iron Man. Let that sink in. I said, son, why, are, why do you think your fake lasers are hurting me? And his answer was, because, Dad, you said I was Iron Man. And so if you said I was Iron Man, then I'm going to walk in the authority of Iron Man. Friends, this morning in our final point, I need you to understand who God has said you are so that you can walk upright with your lasers to your side saying, boo, boo. Why? Because you understand who God has said you are. That's my expectation. Daddy, Father God, you said I'm your masterpiece. Father God, you said I am the head and not tail. God, you said I am above and not below. God, you said I am victor and not victim. And so, God, if you spoke it, I'm going to walk in it. How, how, how do I, how do I, how do I, how do I not move based off of my reality, but based off of what I'm expecting of God expanding my territory that I know who God is I know what he can do and I know what I can do in him